Phineas Brzee was in many ways the most impressive of the Nazarene founders. Uh, Brzee and Hiram F. Reynolds were the two people who did more to shape the Church of the Nazarene than any others. Reynolds' uh, area of excellence was in promoting Nazarene missions. Uh, Brzee's area was really in the area of pastoral care and church governance. Uh, Brzee's whole career was, was centered around the pastoral ministry and in that capacity he excelled. He had brief stints as a district superintendent, one year in Iowa, one year in Southern California, but it was really the pulpit ministry that was the center of his, of his life and, and ministry. Uh, because he was such a great preacher and a compelling preacher, uh, he was able to develop a congregation in Los Angeles of nearly a thousand members. And so when the Church of the Nazarene came together through mergers in 1907 and 1908, he brought the largest congregation into that, uh, into the movement. He brought the largest congregation into the movement and also brought several years of experience as a general superintendent of the church in the West. It was no accident then that he was the first general superintendent elected by the United Church, uh, first in Chicago and then again in Pilot Point, Texas in 1908. Uh, the leadership that he gave to the church included this, this notion that we should have a Methodist Episcopal polity. Uh, there are three basic schemes of, of church structure, Episcopal, Presbyterian, and Congregational. Uh, Brzee's years in the Methodist Episcopal Church, though, had convinced him that the Methodist Episcopal Church's structure was basically a good structure for the Church of the Nazarene. And he defended this type of structure in his negotiations with the churches in the East, which were very congregational in polity. And in the end, he prevailed. He brought about a, a modified episcopacy in the sense that, that the general superintendent was subject to re-election. So it wasn't lifetime episcopacy, but he brought into the church a strong emphasis on the district as a basic unit in the church, the district superintendent as a leader, and the general superintendent as a kind of episcopal figure. Uh, he believed in the trust clause that may, meant that church property was essentially the property of the district and not the local church. And there were, he, he brought in Methodist Episcopal uh, ordination practices. Uh, in the early years of the church in the West, he sort of flew by the seat of his pants, but by 1904, he had, he had moved back toward the basic Methodist Episcopal type of polity. And it was this system of governance that he gave to the Church of the Nazarene. And it has tended to serve the church fairly well over the years.